Good evening. Hi, this is Frederick from Sound United. I am calling in from Hong Kong. Um, we would like to thank everyone. We currently are really excited because we have 501 participants and it keeps climbing. So this is really cool. We're very happy about that. Um, we have done a good job at um, promoting this and we wanted to thank our partners uh, for the region. So we have attendees from all countries in the South Asian places. We have from India, all the, all the, all the states in India. We have partners in the United Arab Emirates, the GCC countries. We have Kuwait, we have Lebanon, Oman, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Jordan. We have attendees from Pakistan. So this is a very big group, very happy about that. So on the line, we also have Jim. We also have Jen. They're both uh, all based in um, in uh, Vista in California, in San Diego. And we have, of course, our host, Phil Jones. Um, over to you, Phil. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Phil Jones. I am uh, the director of training. I get to tr I get to travel around and talk about all of these diff all of our great brands such as Denon, Marantz, Class A, Definitive Technology, and um, as well as Pocadio. So I'd like to welcome you to to my home in San Diego, and um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you today about um, wireless, wireless technologies, wireless music, how to distribute music, whether it's wired or wirelessly across a, um, a large home, condominium, um, apartment complex, those types of things. So today we're gonna talk about um, advancements in Wi-Fi. Uh, our solutions that are offered by our company, Sound United, as well as um, ways to optimize the wireless services that are available in your particular country. And, and finally, tips and tricks to ensure that you get the most reliable um, transmission of that music from point A to point B if you're using a wireless system. So I will be talking about some services that may not be available in your particular region, but the concept is going should be um, universal. Um, we, we're, we, um, we have a large group right now. It's about, whoa, um, about 300 people and climbing. So the, your microphones are muted, but it does not mean we do not want you to participate. If you look in your participants panel, you will see a, a tab for questions. Please put your questions there, not in the chat, in the questions area. And we will pause throughout this particular session to try to answer your questions. And anything we do not answer um, during the session, we will hopefully answer at the end. So please put those questions in. There is no bad question. If you have the question, most likely someone else will have a question as well. Do not worry about having to take notes on the about what I'm put what you see on the slides. Um, Jen is actually going to post the slides and the presentation in the handouts section after. Um, the event is done. So you have all the slides that I have that you're seeing here. You'll have all that information for you. The next thing is if you end up losing audio, don't panic. Um, you do have, like I said, the slides available and you will get those as a handout. And we will be posting this video on our Sound United training YouTube channel, which you should subscribe to and we'll talk about that later. So you'll have a backup or if you wanna watch it again um, and go over some things that, that we had talked about because you couldn't really remember. All right, so let's get started. So. The first thing we want to talk about is the fact that uh, Sound United offers a large variety of solutions using our HEOS platform. HEOS stands for Home Entertainment Operating System, and that includes um, audio video receivers, two channel pieces, network pieces, custom integration pieces, sound bars, wireless speakers. So there's a solution for pretty much any application if someone's looking for high quality wireless music performance. And like I said, um, one thing we want to talk about is we're launching a new lineup of products called the Denon Home. These replace the old Heos 1, 3, 5, and 7. And we've, ad ad and we've added um, uh, not only a new cosmetic, but the, what, what the drivers that are in it, the speakers that are in it, it's a, different, um, it's a different product. It sounds a lot better, and it has some additional features. 
um, such as a um, proximity sensor buttons. If you look at the top of those speakers, they look like it's glass. And when you wave your hand magically across the top, the buttons will appear. And, that, and those buttons will allow you to turn the volume up, turn the volume down, pause, and there's even what are called quick select buttons where you could put presets of your favorite um, playlists or channels. So you hit that one button and it immediately goes on and plays. And there's even microphones built in. So stand by, you know, um, those are gonna be activated um, along the way and they will give you even more flexibility. The, like I said, there's three models, the Denon Home 150, the Denon Home 250, and the Denon Home 350. I have these in my house and I will show you where along the way these are being incorporated in my home and why I use multiple um, amounts, multiple wireless speakers in my home. The, we used to have four models of HEOS enabled wireless speakers. Now we have three. So think of the 150 as a replacement, a better um, HEOS 1. The 250 is pretty much a replacement for the five, the HEOS 5, and the 350 is a replacement for the HEOS 7. They sound amazing. If you were, if you were comfortable and you really like the performance of the older HEOS product, you will love the sound quality of the new models. Um, and, and, it, and also, we have a variety of other solutions, compact music systems for an office, network audio players for if someone has a nice system, they want to retrofit, maybe add just um, want to join that HEOS family of multi-zone high quality music, as well as network, network AVRs. One thing I want to point out, when you talk about wireless music, there's two types of wireless music listening. One is passive. Passive is I'm, I am um, cooking, I am outside barbecuing, I am outside entertaining, or I'm ha I have a bunch of guests in their house, and the music is there as a background. A lot of times you'll see that at restaurants. While you're, at a, while you're dining with your family, there's music playing in the background. Not super loud, but just adds a, um, a level of ambiance and, um, and relaxation to the particular space. That is passive listening. Active listening is when you sit down with a drink and you, and you watch or, and you focus on what you're listening to. Grab a lemonade, a glass of water, whatever you want, and you sit down in front of your really nice stereo and your main focus is the sound. When you do that, you're gonna be a lot more discerning about your listening experience. And Sound United offers you solutions for both. Great solutions for passive, and excellent solutions for someone who's looking for the highest quality when they really want to sit down and listen to their favorite music, artist, band, whatever. And we offer you those types of solutions. In addition, we also have sound bars. So we have, a, we have the 516 sound bar, which is our newest um, HEOS enabled sound bar that was just announced. And it is loaded with features for that person looking for a great home theater solution, but at the same time, they um, also want to utilize it as in part of this multi-zone world. And finally, um, we also have the 716. This is our flagship heels enabled soundbar. All the tricks you would think about and you would need, including ARC. If you don't know um, the benefits of ARC, I have a whole session just on HDMI 2.1, and we talk about you want to have ARC or eARC on your devices to make sure that that piece is prepared for the future. And it makes it easier to control and it gives you better high quality sound. And this, this, this sound bar is loaded. One thing that's nice about it, of course, is you could use a pair of Heels 150s or any Heels 250s, Heels 1s, Heels 3s, Heels 7s, whatever you want as rear channels. So if someone wants a true 5.1, you, you, you can do that with this bar along with its matching subwoofer which is called the um which will continue as well so what are you looking for a high quality um small speaker for a room or you're looking for a sound bar for a space or you're looking for even a really elaborate home theater system we have a solutions we have tons and tons of solutions for you now 
We don't have time to go through all the details on these particular solutions, but please, um, if you go to our um, our Sound United YouTube channel as well as Sound United University, we have a lot of detail about these particular products. Um, do we have any questions so far? Yes, there are there are a couple. Mm -hmm. One, well, we're having audio issues. You'll be shocked to hear that. Mm -hmm. um, one was, what is Heos? which I answered, mm -hmm. which music streaming services does HEO support in India? Ah, um, I'm gonna have to actually have Frederick answer that question. Frederick, do you know which ones they support in India? I currently, there is a couple of services, uh, I cannot remember exactly which ones that are on the roadmap. So if you have your HEROES app and you look at it currently, you will not find them, but we are adding them soon. So we are negotiating with the services and we will be uh, checking uh, if there is a, enough demand for. And I remember there was one, didn't, I cannot recall exactly the name of the streamer, but yes, there is an Indian service on the roadmap very soon. Yes, so we, we continue to add services to HEOS. HEOS stands for Home Entertainment Operating System. I'm gonna show it to you in complete detail and show you how I use it in my own home. If you look behind me, that is my rack of electronics. Um, it's full of a variety of products like Marantz and uh, as well as a variety of other products. I have actually one of the um, drives in there and to run four rooms or four different zones plus my AVR. There's five zones of, wire, of high quality music in that rack. And I have um, a lot more in my home. So we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you HEOS um, real quickly to have more detail. Of course, like I said, Sinai University, as well as our YouTube channels, will go into even further detail than I could do today because we only have about an hour, okay? So. Phil, there's a, there's a ton of questions. I'm gonna do my best to, to answer most of them, mm -hmm. but we just got informed that Spotify supports in India from Errol who have used it in, the, in their showroom. Yes, um, one thing you can do is um, if you down, you can download the app and, um, and normally, I'm not sure by region if all of the services are posted or if it's based on your, um, your, uh, uh, where your VPN, if it hides the ones that are not available. I've never tried it in a different country to actually find out, but the app and is available. Prime Music, Prime yeah. Music, Spotify okay. so, and Apple Music. Yeah, and it seems like I think Deezer's kind of a global one as well. Um, the, the, the big thing about it is you don't need a huge amount of services. I have them because I can, but a lot of times each one of these services has literally millions of songs. So if you can get a, a title and a Deezer or a title and a, and a, um, and a, some other one, a Napster, that should be enough. Pretty much any song you're looking for, you should be able to find. So that's it. So, so don't feel like you have to have them all. And by the way, it even supports Bluetooth. So say you someone comes in your home, I can Bluetooth from my smartphone to one of the speakers in my home. And then from that speaker, I can take that speaker and broadcast to all of the other zones in my home. So if someone comes to your house and they have a service or they want to play a song, they can Bluetooth their mobile device to like a maybe a Heels wireless speaker. And then that speaker can distribute that audio to the rest of the house. So it's really um, a, a lots and lots of flexibility. How many zones can you have? You can have up to 32 zones. I'm not sure if you can have 32 zones in your house. I am really impressed. And you can have eight different things playing at the same time, and you can have 16 of those rooms synced together. And they will be in perfect sync. And that is important if you have larger spaces so you don't hear any echo. The other thing that's nice is you can actually take two speakers and you can pair them together and make stereo. So say you don't, you don't have space for two bookshelf speakers and a full AV rack, you can buy two heels, 250s, put them on stands and tell the system to make one to left and one the right, and it'll play back in stereo as one zone. So that's really a cool thing as well. In my house, I have 15 zones of Heos in my home right now. So let's see if we can actually show you my actual home. So if I go here, um, this is actually um, a, a, my smartphone 
in my home. And on my smartphone right now, I, you can see all of the zones that I have. I have a, I have a theater, a bathroom, a deck, um, uh, my daughter's room, dining room, living room, kitchens, all a variety of different rooms here. What's really nice too is say I entertain and I'll show you my room, my house, I could actually take um, my living room and if I take the living room and I highlight it and I drag it down above the kitchen, they will group together. And then I could take my dining room and I can drag that down and it'll group together. So now I took three of the zones and I grouped them together because it's one big open space. Now, when I'm playing in that room, so oops, we'll skip that track. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. When I'm playing in that room, I can actually, um, I have different volume levels. So if you look here, there are different volumes. So not only do I have a master volume at the bottom, once I get the levels the way I want them, I can turn the whole system up and down um, together as one big group. So, and if you look here, if I hit music, you can see all of the services that are available. When you set it up, the system will ask you to put in all of the passwords for the services that you have available. So if you have one service, you put in one. If you have two or three of these, you put in all two or three services. The nice thing is once you log, when the app opens up, um, you don't have to go to most of these. It's just gonna be, you get to it from this app. So if I hit Amazon Music, I go right there. If I hit Title, I go directly to Title, and all of my login information is, is in here. If you have music on servers, uh, if those servers are on the network and they um, and you have them turned on to be ex to be visible to, for the entire network, I can access those mu that music as well. I have a Sony Media Player, I mean high resolution um, uh, audio player that that acts as a server, I, and I have two PCs that I can actually utilize as servers as well, and I can grab music from all of those different devices. So. Um, Quest, any any questions there, Jim, so far? Actually, we have oh, an interesting yeah. question. Yeah. Um, if I may jump in there, Jim, sorry. Um, oh, how, exa how exactly does the wireless speaker uh, distribute to other zones? What's the process? Okay. So in other words, if you have okay. a, spe a heel speaker and you, you put in um, maybe a USB on the back of that one, and then you want to distribute to other zones. Um, it, that that information is sent up the network and then distributed through your Wi-Fi network. So it isn't a peer-to-peer. -peer. It's not broadcasting from one speaker to another. It's sending the information up to your home network and then everything on your network can grab it. Does that make sense? So so that's the best way to explain it. So, so here's my home, um, 15 zones. Oh, by the way, when I pick a song in HEOS, I am... I, um, I am not casting that song from my phone to the speakers. I'm not doing that. All I'm doing is I'm picking a song on a service, Tidal, Spotify. And I say, I want to hear this song in this room. That tells the speaker to go to Spotify at this location. This URL in Spotify is where this song is located. Go get it. Does that make sense? So I'm not casting to all these devices. It's Each speaker goes out and gets their own song. In order to keep them in sync, you'll notice that it takes a second or so for everything to group. That is because they're all getting together. It's like an orchestra where you go one, two, three, and the entire orchestra plays. So what happens is they'll delay for a second so they can all get on the same page to play back in sync. So that's how that works. So in my this so this is actually the inside of my home. And this is my kitchen, my living room, and my dining room. And you'll notice that it is one large, large, large space. One tip that I can give you whenever you are um, setting up a wireless music system, it could be tempting to buy one really, really big speaker to fill a large space and put it in one location. The problem is that is when you play it loud enough for you to hear from the dining room to the kitchen, it's it's not loud enough in the kitchen, but it's way too loud for everyone that is in the living room. So instead of selling one or buying one big speaker, you'd be better off buying two speakers or three speakers and putting them in different locations in the room, that, in, in the different areas. That allows you to play the, the sound evenly around the entire space at a low enough volume that it's comfortable 
for everyone that's in that particular space. So make sure that you do that. So yes, I could have took one big speaker and stuck it way over in the corner um, next to my, um, my kitchen table and blasted it for the entire space, but it would be uncomfortable when I was having dinner um, to, to, to have someone sitting at that kitchen table or that dining room table while somebody was in the kitchen or, or listening to music. So it's better to have multiple um, locations. So in my home, what I have is I, I put a 150 in the kitchen I put a 250 over in the dining room, that, that wall that on the far side of the house that, you, that, um, that had my uh, dining room table. And then I have a, in the living room, I have a bigger 350 near my fireplace. And then finally, I have, um, uh, in my house, I have zones, wired zones of music. But in my house, you'll notice that my ceilings were vaulted. I could not get the wire over there. So I use on my deck a Heos amp to power my outdoor speakers. Normally, a lot of times I play all of these zones together when I entertain because I'm outside barbecuing, cooking something on my barbecue on the deck. Um, at the same time, we have the sliding doors open and people are entertaining in the house. So I can play at a lower volume. Everybody gets great sounding music and I'm not, uh, and then you can talk over it in a passive environment. The, be the next thing, the bass is much, much better because, it's, uh, because now I have the bass is, you normally get dips and peaks. And by dividing it into multiple speakers, I get a much more even um, bass response. And all of these speakers together can play a lot louder than one big one. So if you have the option of using multiples, you could use multiples and you would just group them together like I showed you. Drag all four of these zones together. And remember, you could play um, eight, 16 zones simultaneously together if you wanted to. So you could drag these together and have one evenly dist um, distributed music. Any other questions as we go on to the next slide? Phil, if, you, if you'd like to just field questions for the next 10 minutes, okay. we could do now, that. I'm okay. not even kidding. <laughs> okay, well, um, so well hopefully- I'm trying to get through and answer as okay. many of, of okay. them as we okay. can. So what we'll do, yes, yeah, so what we'll do is anything about our components, because a lot of the questions they're gonna ask will probably be answered in the future when it comes to how do you control it and, and how many, what, how, what is my Wi-Fi network, anything about the products themselves? Well, one that, thing that would be really good for you to show, if possible, would be how an AVR or a pre-pro, how that shows up in the app okay. with the separate zones. Okay, um, we can definitely do that because we're getting ready to Perfect. talk about how to how to interact with your system. So I say I have all these different these different um, uh, music, uh, all these different zones, and there's di multiple ways to control it. So the first way is I I I um I go to my zone, and if you look here, you'll see that I, these are all of the zones that are in my house. And right now, of course, I have my kitchen, my dining room, and my living room grouped together. If I scroll down to what's called my theater. My theater is actually my Marant AV8805. If now it's playing once, um, it's playing Ultra HD Amazon New Arrivals. If I click on there, you'll see that there's multiple zones um, built into our AVRs. A lot of our AVRs can support two and three zones. All of those zones have to play the same um, as, um, as uh, the theater is one, that receiver is considered one Heos device. It may have three zones, but it's one Heos device. So say my main zone is my theater and zone three would be my garage. I, if I turn on my garage, it would have to play the same thing as my theater. Uh, so, so, so there are three zones, but all three zones act as one. Once you pick a song, it's gonna play on all three zones. I can have, and I can turn on just the zone that I wanna listen to for, for music. So that's how that works, okay? Um, so one thing I want to point out is there's multiple ways to control um, your, your system. Normally, all of, most of these apps I can control directly from the Heos application. There is one that's a little different, and Spotify is always different. If I click on Spotify, it opens up the Spotify Connect app, their application. That is how it works for every music service out there. Spotify wants you to control Spotify and pick the song from their, um, from their application. Once I pick the song, things like volume up and down and grouping more speakers with it are done back in the, in the Heos app. It just wants to know 
um, what do you, um, what song do you want to play is picked on Spotify. Okay. All the other applications, you pick them directly from the application um, itself. It goes directly in to the application itself to find out what you're doing. Um, what I also like is if I make a playlist on my um, smartphone, on my tablet, uh, on my PC, um, once I make that playlist as I'm driving or traveling, that playlist for titles, Spotify, Amazon Music HD are all available in this app on the phone um, uh, in the title app. So everything. So so once you make those playlists, they exist in, in, in this location as well. So you don't have to make them twice. Another way that you can interact with music, and we're gonna talk about this in a second, is a new application called Rune. And what Rune is, is Rune is a service that takes your all of the music that's in your personal library, all the download mu music, as well as a select number of music applications and puts them all in one location. And what it does, it, it, adds, it makes a very, um, almost like um, personalized, um, uh music library for you um even has like articles in it so i can go and hit the discover and it makes basically a a little um article um that exposes you to a lot of different new music and as the device gets bigger the content gets richer so when i go from an iphone from a phone to a tablet to a pc the amount of visuals and graphics get much much better so of course uh, there's, if you're someone that has a control system, like in my house, I can, um, all, all of our heels enable, all of our wire enabled stuff can be controlled um, using that control system. And, and I have that control system also connected to my voice control. So I can say, Miss um, Amazon lady, play Bob Marley in the kitchen. And it will actually find Bob Marley from one of the services I have available and play it in my particular in the kitchen which is actually pretty neat um, so there's lots of ways to control like i said either your fancy remote control system like a harmony like i have or you can use your voice and each voice um each voice system has different levels of capabilities and we continue to grow um, each service to make them more and more usable okay and as we talked about, you have your Heos app to control it. You have your Spotify Connect, which is how you would control Spotify. And then, of course, we have this Rune um, control that I talked about. And what separates the Heos system, Heos will give you more access to more streaming services. Okay. And you can control your older Heos product with your newer Heos product. Um, Apple, the Rune is designed for Denon Emirates AVRs and any. Heos enabled device that supports AirPlay too. But it's a lot more of a visual experience. There's a lot more graphics and a lot more, it's a lot more visual. So why, so if you look at that, that's a very visual looking presentation. The reason why I like it is I'm old, you can see by the gray. And I remember going out and buying a record or buying a CD. And when I was playing that record, I would sit down and I would read the cover, not the cover, the, the the liner notes, and find out who was the drummer, who was the producer, and I would find out, wow, this same producer has done four or five albums that I love, and it made me want to go out and explore more about that producer. These days, with digital files, you're lucky to get a clip, um, an album cover, a little picture of an album cover with very little information about the particular artist. And, 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 and that type of stuff. And Rune makes it far more engaging that I can get a lot more information that I can read. I can read about the artist uh, and I can discover new artists and everything else. If you want to learn more about Rune on our YouTube channel, our Sign United YouTube channel, I just spent an hour on Rune going in between the difference between Rune and Heos. So we can't cover it all here, but you can go in and see me interact with Rune and Heos and you can see the differences as we interact, okay? Now, there's three parts to, to Rune, we'll talk, uh, a core, which is the brain, where you tell it where your music is, the music that you own, and what services you have, a controller, which is your smartphone, and uh, an output device, which is your, um, your um, he, uh, he, Rune-ready speaker. If you think about Heos, Heos just has a controller and output, doesn't need a core, 
okay? The controller tells the device itself where to go and what to do. Um, with Rune, core, Rune is kind of the, you need that core to kind of organize everything. Tons of products supported. I'm not going to go through them all. Don't worry about reading the small text. That will be provided in the handout. And the nice thing about it is people say, well, what if I buy into your service, your HEO service? What if the customer or I have an older um, device? How do I incorporate somebody else's stuff with your new stuff? And that's one thing that's nice about Rune is a ton of manufacturers support it. So if you have something like maybe a Sonos or an older Chromecast device or some other AirPlay device, you can incorporate all of that into one uh, multi-zone system at, with one interface. So that's what makes it cool. Any questions, Jim, about um, those types oh, of things? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, can you comment on the difference between Sonos and Heos? Ah. That is very good, and I am definitely going to get into that. Um, that's one of the, when we get into how to build a more powerful, more reliable Wi-Fi service. There are some things about it. Number one, currently we stream in higher resolution music. We have higher res um, channels available on our service. Number two, you have a lot more flexibility on how you set the system up on a wireless platform, which ensures higher reliability. Number three, we have more solutions available. It's built into our AVRs to work just um, perfectly. It's built into network players. It's built into wireless speakers, and it's built into custom integration pieces. Um, Sonos, if you add it to an AVR, it's kind of connected, but it really isn't fully in, um, um, enveloped or built into the AVR, so the functionality is nowhere near as robust. Uh, wireless speaker to wireless speaker control is great. Um, AVR receiver ver, um, with heels built in versus a Sonos connected, I mean, a Sonos connected AVR, massive difference in what it looks like and what you can do, including things like, I don't know, cover art, you know, stuff like that. All right. So before we get started with that, uh, that actually, that, that lead, any other questions, Jim? Um, can you show skipping or going back on a track? And I know that varies from service to service, but they actually want to see that. Okay, okay, hold on a second. Boop, boop, boop. While you're looking or setting this up, I have been digging in my notes and we have a service provider in India that we're looking to partner with, which is Savan. So if you're familiar with that, this is on the HEOS roadmap. Okay. Now, if I take my garage right here and I start playing my garage service, You'll notice that it's only a, um, a skip forward. This is because the service that I'm using, I'm not paying for. It's one of the free services with commercials. So if I get in the US, I can get Pandora. I can have a paid service where I can actually specifically ask for a song or there's just channels. So if I go to Pandora right now, you'll see that the Pandora service just has um, radio stations. Um, Khalid Radio, Beastie Boys Radio, Buble Radio. Those are radio channels, and all I have the ability to do is skip forward a few songs. On the paid services, where I'm actually going to go through and, and play something specifically, so I go in here, I pick one of my personal playlists created by me or anything that's on the service, and I say, okay, I want to play this playlist here, and I start playing that outside in my garage. starting to play, you will see that there is a forward, a back, a pause, and a repeat, and also an asterisk to say, I like this song, um, play stuff like this. This is one of my favorites. So if I want to go back to my favorites, I click that little star, and, and it's our, to tell them that I want to do that. This is because I am paying for this service, and because I'm paying for this service, I have the ability to ask for this song specifically, and I can go forward and backwards and pause and repeat it as many times as I want um, because it's just part of the paid service. So if you only see a forward button, it's most likely a free service. If you see a forward and a back button, those are normally for services that you have, um, that you're paying for paid services, okay? So that's the thing that I know is people say, how come I can't go forward and back? on specific services. Okay? 
so let's go back here. Now, somebody was asking me about the Sonos um, product. And one thing that separates us from a lot of the different services is we have most streaming services used to have to sacrifice performance for convenience. Um, you could have a lot of songs like the old MP3s on our iPads, I mean, on our iPods or, uh, or iTunes stuff, but it was compressed. It was not CD quality. I had the convenience of a thousand songs in my in my pocket, but I didn't have the quality of those CDs and records that I so that I that I really love. And you know what? If you're listening to something passive, or you're walking down the street, or you're on the subway, maybe that's fine. But when I'm sitting down in front of a nice stereo system like the one I have behind me, I want the highest quality possible. So there's a variety of services that are available. This is just a couple. This this is a couple of them that offer at least CD quality sound or better. In fact, Amazon Music HD and, um, and, um, and also can actually go above that. So depending on how you're controlling your system, whether you're using the Heos app or Rune, you have a lot, the ability to distribute CD quality sound or better. And that also includes your personal library. If you have a whole bunch of high quality, high resolution files, you can distribute those all over the house from your computer, to your different zones in the highest quality available. So now you don't have that problem with distributing audio, high quality audio. But there are some tips that you need to do to make sure you get it. The first thing, you need to go into, the, into your Heos app and tell the Heos app that you want the highest quality possible. So under the device area, you'll see all the different devices that I have. If I click on that device, it's gonna ask me some questions about things like, do I want the quality high or low? The next thing is you have to go into the app and tell the app, each app that you have, that you want the highest quality from that application. Every single app has this. I don't care which app you're looking at. Most of them default to a lower um, quality sound because there's no guarantee that your Wi-Fi network or your mobile system can support that type of data. Many of us um, do not run their mobile data or their cellular data at maximum because um, it's a lot of, unless you have unlimited data on your phone, you wouldn't do that. But when you get home, um, many people can support <coughs> the file, the, the file th that amount of data on um, Wi-Fi networks. If you have more than 15 or 20 megabits per, sec um, um, megabits per second da um, download, you should be able to support um, the highest quality when it comes to streaming music. So go into these applications and turn them up. If not, most of the time, you're not going to get the best sound. OK, any questions about that, Jim? I'm sure actually if you do, I will show you that a little later when I go back into the menu. But, but this is actually where they're located and what they look like on these particular services. And like I said, um, one of the issues is when I take the reason why these apps default, most apps default to a lower um, quality um, bit stream or, or stream is because of the amount of data you're moving back and forth. When I turn up all of the applications, they give me the best that you can do. And I have a whole bunch of zones like I have in my house. I have 15 zones. Then the bandwidth requirement for your network becomes much, much, much greater. So if you want it to work, um, you have to think about how do you set up your wet network in more uh, and to be prepared. Any questions, Jim, so far? I'm sure there are. Yeah, there's a question here for integration, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Can we integrate HEOS with Savant system? Uh, I believe, you can. Uh, Jim, do you remember? I believe you can. We're pretty good with most um, third-party services. Some of them we have shared the full APK. So say you have something like a URC or a Josh AI or a RTI, if I have a keypad, I can actually see the metadata from the Heos app in that keypad as if it was the Heos. We basically sit, share, this is how the software works. So we do work hard with all of our um, third-party services. If you look at Denon and Morant's products, and Heos is now kind of that under that Denon umbrella now, um, we work really hard to ensure that we are um, very compatible when it comes to um, the third-party services. Because I think, Jim, Savant's kind of a big one at um, at uh, Best Buy? Yes. Okay. okay. Savant is huge. Okay. So so let's talk about maximizing the Wi-Fi. And I just want to give you guys a couple of tips 
to ensure that your Wi-Fi, you get the best from your service. The first thing, if you can run a wire, run a wire. Um, uh, like, if, like if you look at my rack behind me, I have a um, AV8805 uh, and a drive in this rack. So this is the equivalent of five zones in this rack. Because I also in that rack have, um, there's other things that would want to use your Wi-Fi. I have a Roku, an Apple TV, a PlayStation, an Oppo Blu-ray player. I have, I have, I think I have 10 zones or 10 to 15 devices that require Wi-Fi literally in that rack. Now I could have let my Wi-Fi router, which is right above it, distribute that to that rack, but that would not ensure maximum reliability. So I put in a 26 port switch that is connected to the router and, um, and then the route and, and everything else in that rack is connected with a wire. Immediate reliability. Save the wireless until you cannot run a wire. All right, so, so please, please do that. Just because it has wireless, if you can connect the wire, connect the wire anyway. That's the first tip to ensure that if you have a lot of zones, you're going to end up with the best performance. The next thing, check your speed. Um, like I said, if you have more than uh, 20 megabits per second, you're pretty fine. You're pretty much good for several zones of high quality music. Jim and I have done demos in hotel rooms using hotspots, um, cellular hotspots at hotels and at trainings um, to do multiple zones of wireless music. So you don't need, so when you get into that 20 or 30, you're okay. The problem is you're sharing that Wi-Fi bandwidth with all of the other devices that are in your home. So the first thing you need to do is you need to see, um, a lot of times you need to compare the wired to the wireless to make sure that there is not a huge difference in speed. So if I go here, uh, the, the ones that I'm using for my wireless system is a Google um, Wi-Fi. And I can look here and it will give me status. So it tells me under my Google Wi-Fi that my most recent download speed is 221 megabits per second. That is what I'm getting from the pipe. There's guys across the street that are at one gig, but 221 is pretty freaking blazing. I can run multiple 4K streams and high for my kids' rooms and I can be running multiple zones of, of Heos, no problems, no glitching. Then what you want to do is you want to go to your to your um, to your uh, your phone and maybe do a speed test. Um, and then you want to check to see how much of that speed you are actually getting. So if you're looking at me right now, I'm getting I have 220-ish on average, and but and, but my Wi-Fi is about one about 180, 181. So that's a pretty good percentage of um, when you compare what I, what's coming down the pipe to what I can distribute throughout my house. If you're in a low, if, if you do that and all of a sudden you have 200 coming in and you only have 60 going out, that tells you that your wireless router is your limitation. It's a choke point. And that's what happened to me before. I was paying for 200, but whenever I ran a speed test, I was getting 60 or 80, which means I was only getting 40% of the, 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 the bandwidth that I paid for. And 90% of the time, that is because of wireless settings or the limitations of your router. So the first tip I can give you is if the cable company or, I, or internet service provider gives you a router, they're okay if you have one computer, right? But they're just not capable of handling these big systems. I have 53 devices on my network at this time. And that includes my kids' iPads, my kids' smartphones, all of my Heo stuff, all of my TVs, which are smart, um, laptops, Apple TVs, Roku's, the list goes on and on. And you'll be amazed at how quickly um, you can exceed the limitations of these routers. And that is, and and the way you'll notice it more for wireless music than you will for web stream for browsing. If you have problems with your browsing, it's basically the pages load a little slower. The photographs take a few seconds longer to grow 
to load because it uses what's called a TCP protocol. The wireless music uses an ED, uh, UDP protocol. And if you have a problem, you get, get dropouts. You get dropouts of music, and that can be very annoying. So a website um, loading a little slow, kind of a pain, but music dropping in and out or stopping and starting is a complete hassle. All right, so, so, so you need to make sure that um, you can support UDP for large devices. The problem with most of these USB routers is they can handle a, at a maximum, if you're lucky, 15. Most of these ones that the providers give you for free, you'll be lucky to get eight devices. And that seems like a lot, maybe a couple of phones in the family, one laptop, maybe a game system, but you can quickly exceed that when, because now we have smart light bulbs and, and wireless cameras and automatic and wireless door locks and the list goes on and on. You could quickly in a, um, exceed 17 um, devices. So the first thing I'll tell you is replace um, that router with a better router. Um, and uh, one of the things that makes the router better is these cheap routers only have one antenna. So basically everybody has to wait in line and, and basically a router doesn't send data to all devices at the same time, these inexpensive ones. What it does is it sends data to um, device number one and then device number two and then device number three. And if you have 20, 30, 40 devices in your home, you can see how that's gonna slow down your, your, your services. And it, everything adapts to the slowest connection. So if you have an older device on there, everything's waiting for that one device to get the information it needs before it gets its turn. Better routers use what's called MU MIMO or multi-use MIMO. Basically what I can do is I can, I, can not, I can send information to multiple users at the same time. So a, a great analogy of that would be uh, the old routers that they give you for free are one antenna, it's like a one lane road. So if grandpa or my or or one of or somebody is driving really really slow in a cheap car it just backs up traffic because everybody is at the mercy of the person driving the slowest when you have a better router with the multi-use um multi-user multi-in multi-out technology it's like a multiple lane highway if someone's driving really slow they can move over to the slow lane and other people can pass and um even if there's not enough lanes People wait less because there's more lanes servicing the, each um, particular customer. So you end up with much better speed um, if you get by a better router. Any questions about that so, so far, Jim? I'm sure there's going to be like, wow, a million questions right now about, about routers. I have not. Uh, just give me a second. I'm still way up on the question list. <laughs> um, one thing we will tell you is I am going to, we're going to download the Q&A that is in this, these questions, and we're gonna do our best to answer these questions. And then those people who are attending, um, we, will, um, uh, we will see, I will have Frederick send out um, these, um, the, the FAQ after we answer them. So if we don't get a chance to answer every single question, we are, we are really working hard to make sure that um, the question that you ask, we answer. Okay, so if I don't get to it today, um, we only have a, um, we'll go over, I'm sure we are gonna go over and answer as many as we can, but if we can't get to them all, I will make sure that we answer them as um, in an FAQ that we can share with you at a later time, okay? Have you recommended a router yet? Um, I will tell you that long as it's multi-use, multi, uh, multi MU, multi-in, multi-out, um, you'll be fine. And you can normally tell those routers, um, if it's a traditional router, they have a lot of antennas on them. They look almost like spiders. Um, uh, Linksys makes some great ones. Uh, so does, um, uh, I, I use a, uh, Luxo makes, a great, makes great ones as well. There's a lot of really good companies out there. Netgear, all make them. And you'll see that they, that they will promote that they are multi-antenna um, MIMO. That is the biggest thing. That is one of the biggest steps. The other option is a mesh um, system, which I will show you in my house, which is what I utilize. And we'll talk about um, the difference between a traditional router that has antennas trying to blast the entire house 
versus a mesh where a team of different devices to distribute the how the wire the wireless throughout the house. Hmm? I'm sorry, Frederick. I was just going to say, did you talk about the fact that if you use a dual band router, you have to name both bands the same? You can't yes, we're name gonna, we're them gonna, separately. We're, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get there in a second, and that actually leads to this question. Um, this next slide, but Frederick, you had something you were gonna you you had a question or something that somebody wanted to say. Yeah, it wasn't router related, but it was an interesting one. It says, can I stream from my phone via AirPlay on one device and integrate this device in the rest in other, distributed to other Helios devices? Yeah, if it's AirPlay, especially Air, our AirPlay 2, uh, AirPlay 2 allows you to distribute um, from AirPlay to multiple um, Helios enabled devices. So, you, um, so that is something that is possible. You would group them or is it not necessary to group them in advance? If you want, um, you need to group, you would have to group them in advance for AirPlay. And that only works with AirPlay 2, correct, Phil? AirPlay, AirPlay 2. 2. So the but devices you, have to have AirPlay 2. Well, to interesting play thing is you have to anywhere. start with an AirPlay 2 device. So, say for example, I have a Denon um, home, uh, say in your house, you had a Denon home uh, 250 you just bought. That's an AirPlay 2 device. I would I would start with that air that device, and then I once that device was playing on AirPlay 2, I can go into um, um, Heos and I can group my older Heos ones, threes, and sevens to that AirPlay 2 device. So you have to start the stream with an AirPlay 2 enabled device, but then that device can be grouped with AirPlay 2 and AirPlay enabled devices. Does that make sense? So if I started with my AVR or a AirPlay 2 enabled soundbar or an AirPlay 2 enabled wireless speaker, I can group the remainder of my Helios devices that may only be AirPlay with that. Okay? Gotcha, hopefully but it's I mean, only, it only over AirPlay. Only over AirPlay. That's so how you anything would without AirPlay won't work, even if exactly. it has Helios. Exactly. But, Air, but most of our Helios devices have at least AirPlay. They don't have AirPlay 2. So start with the with the heels. If you have a if you have one AirPlay 2 device in your home, make that the start of the group. And if even if it's not in the room you're rooting, you're playing, mute that one device and then group everything else with it. That's Do we how you have bring time the, for excellent. Yeah, we, We'll continue on. I mean, we're going to go over. Hope everybody doesn't mind because it seems like this is a very good, um, very rewarding conversation. I definitely don't mind hanging on. No problem. Um, one interesting question here is, does integration of a Denon AVR with a Helios drive require a wired in connection or can it be done wireless? The Helios drive and the Helios Superlink, like the one that's in my rack, are design, um, do not have a wireless module. So they need to be hardwired to the network. If they're if it's replaced remotely from the uh, the um, from the uh, router, you can use like maybe a wireless access point and use that wireless access point to turn that that Denon drive into um, a wireless device. But right now, because it's a CI um, level device, they assume that that is going to be in a rack that's home run. And right next to that rack should be internet access. So for maximum reliability, you want to plug in a wire. Even though there's four zones, you only plug in a one Ethernet wire, and it can get all four zones from that. Oh, by the way, you can also daisy chain them. So if I had six of those in a rack, I can have I can plug the Wi-Fi into one and then connect one drive to another, to another, to another, to another, and daisy chain that one wire all the way down the line, which is kind of nice. Okay, Phil, a few more tips. Wi-Fi, not Wi-Fi with the drive. You said Wi-Fi. Wired with the drive. Wired. So you connect it wired with the drive, then I can take that one wire and I can connect one wire to another drive, to another drive, and to another drive, and daisy chain the wired connection. Thank you very much, Jim. Make sure I didn't make um, I didn't make a mistake or speak incorrectly. All right. So some more things I want to tell you. Um, we we're talking about Sonos versus something like a um, um, our service, like the Heos. Many services use what are what's called um, a mesh 
or they're locked into the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth. The problem with 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth is the amount of traffic that is on that bandwidth. So let me show you something real quick. If you look here, this is a Wi-Fi analyzer. And if you look here, channel three, channel six, and channel nine are normally the least inter um, used. If you look at channel three, there's not a lot of traffic there. If you look at channel nine, there's not a lot of traffic there. So if you can assign your wireless to act to operate in that range, um, there's your neighbor's house, your the, the person in the apartment next to you is not going to, it has less effect, you have less interference on your Wi-Fi network. Now, 2.4 has a lot of traffic. If I go to five gig, come on, you'll see, look at how much open space that there is. So one thing that's nice about HEOS is HEOS um, defaults to the five gigahertz range, which means there's less traffic and there's less uh, um, chance of your neighbor um, interfering with your Wi-Fi network. So if you can set it to five, you set it to five. A mesh network that runs Sonos is a 2.4 gigahertz mesh network. Can't be moved. Ours, because we ride on the internet, your, your Wi-Fi, I can expand coverage by buying access points, better routers, and I, I can even select what channel I want my wireless music to live so I can bypass all of the traffic. The, the next thing is, so I can go into a router and under routers, it's going to ask you, do you um, what channel do you want to put it in? So when you go into the router, you type in the 192.1. Whatever that's going to be, you go into your router when you set it up, and it's going to ask you, do you want auto, where it jumps back and forth between channels, um, trying looking for the um, an open channel, or do you want to set it to a fixed channel? A lot of times, when it jumps up and down looking for channels, you may end up with a disconnect or a um, a dropout in audio. So we tell people, if you're really building a system, um, do, use the Wi-Fi analyzer, find the open channel, set it to that channel, and say, stay there. And what you end up with is um, better coverage, less interference, and less dropout. Some other things you can do. Um, there's different types of security keys. Like, you know, when you set up your, your Wi-Fi, it's going to ask you, how do you want your, your Wi-Fi password? And there are things such as um, w, um, uh, WEP, w um, wpa all these different ones select wpa2 psk um, for the highest wi-fi speed we have learned um my um one of our pals jewel is a um used to work with us is a wi-fi fanatic and he had discovered that if you use web key encryption it can slow down your internet by your speed by 80 percent so make sure you, you if choose the wpa psk which is found on all better routers. So if you buy a better router, you will definitely have that selection. Can't guarantee that that ISP router you bought, you got for free, is going to give you the ability to change the channels or um, also um, select your encryption, for the encryption that you want. Oh, by the way, Jim pointed this out and we're gonna talk about it multiple times. If you have a 2.4 and a five gigahertz network, name them both the same. In my house, my, my uh, both of my encryptions for my things are labeled Tori. So if the uh, HEOS device has to go drop down from the five to the 2.4 because there's a range issue or a lack of signal, um, it will just automatically go back and forth, but it will try to default at five. But you have to make sure that both, uh, if you have, if you see two, one for five, one for 2.4, that they're both labeled the same. So the HEOS system can do that. The next thing, this is a little setting on a router called UMPMP. Make sure that that is turned on. Many routers have it switched off. It's the default to have it switched off in many routers. This can cause the volume control to be sluggish. So when I slide the volume slider, nothing happens for a little while before the volume goes up. Or when I'm trying to group multiple things together, the, the grouping please wait thing will spin longer while it does its grouping. So if you set this to on, um, it, the volume control will be quicker and more responsive and grouping um, three zones together or two zones together or six zones together will take less time. The other thing that we wanna talk about since we're talking about 2.4 is 
um, not only is your um, all of your Wi-Fi stuff, the stuff you think about, your smartphone, your tablets, um, all of those devices, your neighbor uh, is on 2.4 gig um, gigahertz. Most likely, there's a lot of other things that that operate at that frequency as well. Um, baby monitors, security cameras, grandpa's hearing aid, Bluetooth devices, cordless phones. And if you have a mesh network like a Sonos, even a Sonos. So everybody is fighting for limited traffic. I used to have my HEO set up on um, 2.4 um, when I had my inexpensive router. And whenever I ran the microwave, the audio went out. Because microwave, um, when you microwave food, that sends out a blast of 2.4. When I went to five, now I'm at five gigahertz. When, I, um, uh, when I'm using my, when I turn on my microwave, my music just plays continuously. So go up to five because five is where there's less traffic and there's more reliability. So use five because there's less traffic. And one thing that makes Heels nice is because we are part, we utilize your Heels, your, your Wi-Fi network, and it defaults to five, it helps with its reliability. So it, it can use either 2.4 or 5. It will automatically default to 5, but make sure that you name both um, of your networks the same. To, like in my house, Tori. Name them the same so the system can jump back and forth. But, um, uh, any questions about that type of stuff so far, Jim? Looks like we're a little over, but I think that's going to be okay. There was a question about uh, how you rename the AVR zones in HEOS. Ah, I will, sh I will actually show you that um, as we go along. Okay, what's you the next? You can't rename the, the zones in HEOS. You have to do it in the AVR setup menu. Exactly. And then For they show up in the HEOS. Um, let's see. There was a question about suggesting a generation two network amplifier with HEOS. And that was already answered by Frederick, the Marantz mm -hmm. NR1200 or the Marantz PM7000. Yes, that's exactly right. That is so, exactly and then somebody offered up, you, Mike offered up, usually router channels are by default set to auto. So yes. we cannot know our neighbor's router to which channels they will switch unless they have smart analyzing, if they have smart analyzing routers which will yes. switch if we switch. But because yeah, we but, get away from them, they're not going to go where we are either. Exactly, exactly. So you, we say normally, um, as we were talking about it, normally um, uh, three, six, nine are, um, are the ones, um, normally three, six, nine are normally the ones that they don't switch to. If you looked at it, um, it had a little bit of three, but it was three kind of to the, one to three. And then um, four, five, I mean, it was like five, six, seven, and then it was um, nine, 10, 11. So if you look, normally when they switch, um, there's less traffic right at, if you make your middle of your band three instead of two, there's still gonna be less traffic, even with those routers jump. But if you put it in five, there's nobody there. So put it in five and you don't have to worry about it. Because most likely, even if it is switching to auto, there's no one up there but you. So that makes for a benefit. Some, um, some other things that I want to point out is if I go into my, uh, my HEOS device and, and I go to I, there's a settings icon at the very top, that little cog wheel. If I click on that cog, that little wheel, and I go to my devices, I can see all of my different devices that are in the house. Hey, and if Phil, I click, yes. Phil, just yes. go back, if you would, to the start there. You have to go to the music tab. Yes, so we go back for the if you settings look here gear. at the bottom. If I, if I go to the music tab, Thanks. the one that's highlighted in red. Hold on a second, it's a little slow. I'm moving fast. Okay, I'm looking at it over there on my other device to make sure that, that I'm seeing what you're seeing. So under the music device, you will see a cog, and that gets you into the settings menu. Is if I go to help, and I go to check my system network status, I can see the status of each of the devices. This is important when you're trying to determine your Wi-Fi coverage. So as you can see, everything is checked to green, excellent. 
it will also give you a bandwidth, the quality of signal. How good is the bandwidth for each of these particular devices? If it starts to go into yellow or the quality becomes fair, then it's telling you that your Wi-Fi coverage is, is not as good. That's my mom. Let me hang up on her. Is that, <laughs> I feel bad. Is not as good. The, everybody's calling me right now. Is not as good as you would want it to be. If I continue to change the view, it'll even tell me what channel am I operating on. So 149 is a five gig channel. So I can see that I am what channel I am actually operating on um, for each particular device. So it really makes it interesting. Oh, by the way, on this app, if I click on living room here, it should actually, this is another way to go in and see all of the devices that my living room speaker can see. So I can see that right now, my living room speaker is really close to my neighbor, and I can see what um, other signals that router could actually see. NG Hub is my next door neighbor, and because he's right next to me, um, it's I can see that it can see channel 11, but that's okay because this thing is actually using 149 on the 5 gig. So if I put on 2.4, my neighbor's network would probably be stronger than mine. All right, so that's why um, you can, so this is nice. This type of stuff is not available in Sonos. So this allows you to really quickly troubleshoot um, what is going on on your particular network. So you can use this to check coverage because if you put the router in the wrong spot, um, it cannot go through, a lot of times it can't go through walls. So if you have, especially if, if you have concrete walls, uh, even drywall with all, um, and a lot of apartments have drywall with metal studs, it cannot get through that stuff. And what you end up with is areas that have been blocked that you cannot get good signal. So just by moving your router, you can dramatically increase your performance. So I can literally take a Heels 150, take to the farthest point of my house, away from my router, plug it in, go to this status, and start moving the router around in that where it's located, where I can move it around, and until I find the location where I'm getting the strongest signal at the farthest part of the house. So yes, I can do that with a Wi-Fi sniffer, like the one that is um, that is on that I have on my phone. But you can use your Heels to do that because of the network status capabilities that are built into the Heels devices and the Heels app. And like I said, you can go in there and you can see your signal strength, your um, good and, and different ways, as well as what other things can be seen on your network. When I hit connect and it was just white, that is what the status would have came up with after a while. Okay, Another, um, any questions so far, Jim? Oh yeah. <laughs> There's still a lot of people looking for specific branded solutions, but we don't necessarily know what would be available in, in their different region. parts of the world. Yeah. But yeah. go ahead and throw out some names. I think that would be a really good thing. Netgear, Linksys, um, Luxel are all very, very good manufacturers when it comes to routers. The ones you want are the ones that have multi-in, multi-out. If you look at the box and it does not say multi-in, multi-out, on the box. So that's what you have to remember from this whole conversation. Pick up the box. Does it say multi-in, multi-out? Even better, does it say multi-user, multi-in, multi-out? Buy that one, okay? Um, the, because, um, and every manufacturer will make those. I know in the US they're not gonna be cheap. You expect to spend, even in US dollars, 300 to $500 for a multi-use, multi-in, multi-out solution. But if a house like mine with 53 devices and a large family, and the fact that you're using that for um, wireless music streaming, wireless video streaming, um, uh, um, tons of uh, your work stuff, music, all these particular things, it makes sense. It's, it's a big investment, but that investment will last a very, very long time. If you have coverage problems, the big thing we want to point out is do not repeat. Do not use a Wi-Fi repeater. Wi-Fi repeaters will take your signal and cut it in half. So if you had 150 to start, it's only going to send 75 
to, um, it's only going to send 75 probably if you're lucky. The next thing is it makes a secondary IS, um, SSID. So upstairs, when I was using a repeater, another reason why I had lousy Wi-Fi at the beginning when I first got my um, multiple devices was my upstairs was labeled Tori, but the repeater was labeled Marley. So whenever I took my iPad from one room to another, the iPad would switch from Marley upstairs to, I mean, from Tori upstairs to Marley downstairs. These wireless, you don't want to do all of that. Um, skip repeaters. Repeaters make your slow your internet down, and they just add more hassle than what they than what they than what they help. If you want to increase your coverage, the option would be what are called access points. These are what um, how kind of how my house could be configured. I'm thinking about configuring my house this way. You have your router plugged into a switch, and then those switches are plugged into other broadcast um, devices that are. Um, um, divided throughout the house. And you notice that they are connected by a wire. So the speed is the exact same at those access points as the router. So if it's 200 coming in um, and the router is outputting 200, those access points will also output 200. And the SSID is the same. So you can utilize access points. Now, we said you have to run a wire from point A to point B. And people say, oh my gosh, unless my house was pre-wired, I can't do that. Do you have another solution? The best solution for many people are these types of routers. These are called mesh routers. Uh, and oh, by the way, all of these routers are multi-use, multi-user, multi-in, multi-out. And Jim, there's one more that we didn't put on here. It is called, uh, is it Aero? Is that the one we forgot? Eros. Eros. E I think it's E-E-R-O-S. Is yes. that right, Frederick? Yes, and there's one more brand for Asia that's very popular is Asus, A-S-U-S. That's a brand, exactly. a Taiwanese brand, very popular here in Asia. Yeah, and those work great, by the way. So if you're looking for the best coverage with multi-use, multi-out capabilities, these are the way to go. And if you need more coverage, you just buy another, um, another um, mesh. The reason why these are multi-use, multi-out is each one of these has an antenna. So say the one in the rack uh, will, will provide Wi-Fi for the devices close to the rack. The one down in your bedroom will provide the antenna, will serve as the antenna for the device devices down in your bedroom. So it, they really are increased speed. When I switched to the Google Wi-Fi, my speed went from the 60s into what you saw already at the 180s. So these are the, a great, great solution for people who are looking for um, for a solution, I love I love mesh routers. Um, they're simple to set up, and you can do a lot with them. And each one of these routers have an application, so I can check my speed. I can view the history um, of my speed, how fast it's been, if I've had any dips or 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 drops. I can see how many devices are on my network at one time. So right now. I have three of the I have three points connected and I have 56 devices running at this time. If I click on that, it'll show me all of the devices that are running. Okay. If you have kids, I can go in here and I can limit my kids' time so I can find their devices and say at 10 p.m. I want them to turn off. Some other things you can do with here is called priority devices. I can go in here and set a priority. So right now there's no priority set, but if I'm saying, you know what, I want my, um, my 8805 to always have good service and I want my Apple TV to always have good service, those get the information first and my kids' iPads are lower down the line, I could actually do that here. So there's lots of power built into these particular applications. And what I like about this is I'm not typing in 192.1.68 with uh, in to try to get into a traditional router's um, setup menu. This makes it a lot more user friendly. So there is a question from, I hope I'm saying this right. Oh, he's already left. Okay. Never mind. Okay. He wanted to, he's having issues with the Heos bar connecting to the Heos sub and they get unpaired after some days and then yes. they reconnected, et cetera, et cetera. 
that could be a couple of things. We've noticed that that happens. Um, we are working on our firmware and our software to make it better and more reliable. So you have less of those connections and disconnections. But at the same time, a lot of that could be his router is jumping from channel to channel. And why is jumping from channel to channel? It's losing its connection or it's not set to U, 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 UPMP and it's jumping back and forth. So a lot of times if you set up your web key correct, your encryption correctly, your UMP correctly, and we make sure our app is working at its, at its, at its maximum potential, um, they normally stay connected as much as that helps. Those things help. So, so make sure it's not your configuration that's causing the problem. And we will make sure that we continue to work on our software to make it more reliable when it comes to making things, keeping things connected. There was a question related to that is, how does the wireless sub connect to the soundbar? Is it via Bluetooth or via RF or via Wi-Fi? Fred, Frederick, we need a clarification on that. Are we talking about the 516 model that come, the soundbar that comes with a subwoofer in the box? Or are we talking heel. about the 716 with the DSW-1H subwoofer? Because uh, they work differently. Yes, exactly. I okay, so, wasn't it wasn't clear, but we need to okay. double check that. Yeah. Okay. So so if you have if the the system comes with the sound bar and the subwoofer in the same box, that is a direct connect communication between those two devices. Um, the sound bar broadcasts directly to the, the the subwoofer that was in the box with it. If you buy the sound bar that comes separate, and then you buy the separate subwoofer in a HEO system, those are communicated through the HEO's network. Just like I would group two speakers together to play in sync, I group the sound bar and the subwoofer together. Oh, by the way, I could take that same subwoofer and group it with a stereo pair of HEO's 150s if I want to. Um, those are all connect, communicating as a grouped system through the HEOS app. And then you would label that group as, you know, dining room speakers or bedroom. And it would all, but that group is all, but that's communicated differently. Um, subwoofer in the box with the bar, direct communication. Sell the bar, buy the bar, and then buy the subwoofer separate, or you buy the subwoofer separate to connect with a pair of HEO speakers or one initial HEOS enabled speaker, that communication is done via the HEOS operating system through your network. So in case of a direct connection, if it directly communicates, what's the protocol? Uh, do, do we do know you that? Remember? It's probably like basically 2.4. So it it's uh, the output we have a 2.4 and 5 gigahertz output on the HEOS bar and the 716. And so it's going to depend on which band you're using the bar to connect to directly. Because you connect, what you end up doing is you connect the bar mm -hmm. and the woofer as individual pieces to on the HEOS app mm -hmm. and set them up that way, let them get it all updated. And then you go into the bar in settings and you set up, you grab the woofer and pair mm -hmm. it directly to yeah. the transmitter yeah. on the bar. And that's what we're talking about. He's talking about the, the 516, 216. So 516, 2.4 probably to connect. Or like any most sound bars that you buy, um, are there are some pieces that would do five communication, but most of them are going to be in a 2.4. When you're looking at the bar, the sub, the one like a 516 that comes with the bar, the sub comes with the bar, normally 2.4 is where those communicate. The HEO Superlink, uh, it's not wireless, but mm -hmm. for the four zone preamp, is it capable of playing different music in all four zones when connected to a NAS? And yeah. I believe it depends on the NAS, right? It depends how on the NAS. Streams can um, yeah, exactly. Can it depends from. on the NAS and how how strong the processing power is on the NAS. Because each, um, a HEOS drive or a, um, or a HEOS Superlink acts like four HEOS amps or four HEOS links. It's just in one chassis. So just like each one of those links can go out to the NAS drive themselves and grab something, it, um, the, the drive and the Superlink can do that. If the NAS has enough processing power to handle it. In my room, that 
that Core i7 um, a PC with 32 gigs of RAM um, and six terabytes of internal is the NAT, um, is the, where I would access that music from. And it can, in all the zones, if I wanted to grab all um, six, um, eight different tra um, tracks at the same time, it wouldn't be a problem. It all depends on the processing power of the NAT. Yeah, I have actually a Synology in LAS at home and I've got high-res music files on them. And using the Heos app, I can send from the same NAS to three different zones, a separate audio stream. So that does work. Exactly. It depends indeed on the capabilities of your NAS. And it's actually an entry level. It's not that expensive. It's just a yeah. two bay. Yeah. So it's doable. We, yeah, because if you think about it, the amount, um, even if you look at a big music file, it really isn't that big compared to a video file. That device was designed to run a Plex. Um, I have seven TVs in my house and I can run seven different HD movies simultaneously off of that drive using Plex. So if I can run video with full surround um, to seven um, zones, running multiple zones of audio, something like that is kind of a joke. So thank you very much. Um, take care. And um, I will talk to you soon from San Diego. Thanks, Phil. Bye-bye.